Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Friday, April 8th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in eight days. The Notre Dame game in 148 days. The game against Michigan in 232 days. With the spring game just over a week away, it seemed like a good time to look at some of the guys who have made the biggest moves this spring, either moving up the depth chart or potentially securing a starting job for the fall. There have been some guys on both sides of the ball who have made some big moves, so, you know, that's okay. Tony Gerderman is not one of them, but even so, I thought he'd be a good person to talk to about this. So here he is, Tony. How's it going? (laughs) I feel like this is just going to be an episode, 15 minutes of power pausing. Uh, Tom, I am good. Uh, First time, long time. I will hang up and listen. (laughs) <laughs> please don't i don't want to talk i don't want to talk for 15 full minutes about this i think that's why we brought you on to to at least carry some of the some of the weight here um I, let's start on the offensive side of the ball one of the guys who i think we came into the spring thinking this guy's got a decent chance to win a starting job this year and um, you know obviously a lot has changed between then and now but he seems like he has absolutely seized and locked down one of those starting guards job starting guard jobs that is donovan jackson yeah, true sophomore Donovan Jackson, who um, is, you hear the the coaches talk about him, and they've never seen an athlete like this guy at offensive line, and they give you all of the, the high praise and accolades and uh, adjectives about what he is able to do, and this is, you know, all, we, all we've ever really seen from him is the extra tight end that he did a little bit, that role that he played last year in the running game, but you listen to uh, Justin Fry, you listen to Kevin Wilson, you listen to Ryan Day, and it, they don't seem all that concerned about him. Because when they talk about him, they talk about his upside and the way he's performing, not what, uh, you know, well, he still needs this and he still needs this. Like, there's the concern about the offensive line is the depth. I don't think it's about the five starters. And what you also like about him is that he's also working as the number two left tackle. Like, he's talented. He's versatile, and if you're good enough to look like a tackle and work at tackle, it gives you an idea about the mobility he has at guard. You want to do some polling and some things like that and really get the power game going. you got to feel good about your prospects there. Uh, yeah, he's, he's still new. I believe this is his first spring. I, don't, I think he enrolled uh, in summer last year, if I'm correct. And so, you know, this is a time for growth for him to establish himself, to be protecting C.J. Stroud and to have Paris Johnson on one side and Luke Whippler on the other and really get to experience what it's like to be the first team, the responsibilities that come with that. And that alone helps you grow, but then you're facing the Ohio State defensive line, which as we've heard, sometimes the two and threes look like ones and a halves. And, uh, you know, when uh, when Ohio State goes with the second team defensive line, he's facing you know Tyleek Williams and stuff and guys like that to give you an idea of what he has to deal with. So that's going to grow you up pretty quick. And so he's made made an early mark, and uh, I, I think has eased a lot of concerns about that offensive line. Yeah, he's one of those guys who you, the coaches are generally very hesitant to really really gas up a guy who's a young guy, you know, first time starter. You hear a lot of like, well, you know, he's he's coming along well, he's making progress, that kind of stuff. Donovan Jackson, it has been like all gas, no breaks with the the uh, praise for him this spring from the coaching staff, which is really, really interesting and probably pretty telling, I think. It's interesting also, they went with that four tackle lineup last year and, you know, he came in as a guard. He really is kind of, he's built more like a guard than some of the guys they had playing guard last year. But he still does have that quickness, so maybe he's a little bit more of a guard than the guys they had at guard last year. But yeah, if you can marry that with the quickness of a tackle, yeah, that would be uh, that would be a uh, pretty good piece of news for them. Uh, next up, you know, I was going to call this, you know, five five guys who have made a big move this spring or something like that. But the next guy is really two guys. It is two second year cornerbacks, Jordan Hancock and J.K. Johnson. And you just you, you kind of look around. You you've heard kind of positive buzz about them. But then you look around some of the other stuff that's happened around the team this spring, some of the other position moves we've seen, and everything just sort of points to these guys are about to live up to the expectation that, uh, you know, I think people had based on where they were, their recruiting rankings were a year ago. Yeah, we talked a week or so ago, a um, week or two ago, when Legend Cavazos was moved to corner to nickel. Did that say more about 
Cavazos are more about the two um, younger cornerbacks behind him, or not necessarily behind him, but did it say more about Jordan Hancock and Ja'Kalen Johnson? I think we both agreed that it certainly was a sizable statement about those two. And of course, Legend Cavazos has since gone the way of the transfer portal. But I think on Saturday with Cameron Brown out during practice, it was Jordan Hancock running with the ones and with Denzel Burke. And so there's there's not a lot of guys between there's nobody between Jordan Hancock and Jaqueline Johnson and the starters Cameron Brown and Denzel Burke, which means they are getting some serious run, uh, some really good reps. And and again, you look at the Ohio State second team wide receiver group, and Emeka Igbuka is is in that group at, at times, and sometimes it's Julian Fleming, and so those guys switch back and forth, and of course, you know the. the Jaden Ballard that they're going against and Cam Babb when he was healthy. So they have gotten tested. They have risen to the test. I think we saw uh, Jordan Hancock being silver bullet of the week one uh, recently uh, from, uh, from Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator. And again, just like with the Donovan Jackson, you're hearing good things about these two from the coaches. And one day it's something good about Jordan Hancock. The next day it's something good about Jaqueline Johnson. So, very good sign because it's not the deepest cornerback room because the third team is two freshmen, Jair uh, Brown and um, Ryan Turner. Uh, Ryan Turner. And, and so uh, they definitely need these two second year guys. And of course, Ja'Kalen Johnson redshirted last year due to injury. Jordan Hancock played in a handful of games. He's a true sophomore. And, and so they're going to continue to get a lot of burn. Watch them during the spring game. They're going to be out there. Maybe the entire time. Wouldn't be surprised if they're switching sides at some point because they need co- corners out there. But just see what they do. Uh, you, you can go back to the 2017 spring game when Sean Wade and Jeff Okuda had their moments, had some good plays, had some rough plays, but had some game-saving plays, if I recall, down the stretch in that one. And you know, obviously they're not true freshmen, they're second-year guys, but this is going to be their first real chance to show out, and then I, I'm I'm pretty sure they're looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and I mean, to your point earlier about Donovan Jackson going up against, you know, when it's the twos, it's Tyleek Williams. I mean, the twos with the wide receiver unit this year are pretty spectacular as well. So if, you know, if you're going up against Julian Fleming or Rebecca Egbuka or Jaden Ballard or, you know, one of the true freshmen, I mean, you, there is a so much talent in that wide receiver room that, you know, I'm you're, you're exactly right. Those guys are going to get a lot of reps during that spring game if they're healthy. And you would expect, you know, that that's going to be, you know, one of those really interesting things to watch because, you know, as we, as we know from watching millions of spring games over the years, no one ever runs the ball in the spring game. It's all, you know, it is basically seven on seven. And so those corners are going to get tested. It'll be very interesting to see how they hold up against a pretty good quarterback core and a pretty good wide receiver core. So we'll see how that, uh, see how that goes for them. But yeah, all indications are uh, there is reason for optimism there with both of those guys. Uh, next up is someone who is not a freshman, but this is his first year at cam- on campus at Ohio State. Safety Tanner McAllister. When he came in, we sort of figured he's going to have a sort of an initial leg up on the rest of the team because he knows Jim Knowles. He's played in the Jim Knowles defense for a couple of years. So you figure he's going to get off to a good start. But all indications are he has really seized that that uh, nickel spot in, in the starting lineup. It's him and then it's Cam Martinez and... You know, they had they had moved Legend Cavazos over there as the third guy. So Legend Cavazos has already transferred out. So it's really him and Cam Martinez. It seems like Tanner, Tanner McAllister has all but seized that job right now uh, as the starting nickel. Yeah, and he was a guy who could have come in with this air of expectation. Like, like I've come here to save the day or me and Jim Knowles are here and this is what we do. But you can't ingratiate yourself to your teammates that way you can't become a part of the team that way you can't become part of the culture that way we saw the same thing with jonah jackson when he transferred in and he took somebody's job but he was also one of the most well-liked players on the team and you know so i think it was ryan day has said similar things about tanner McAllister has come in and worked been one of the you know worked really hard to establish himself to show to prove himself to all of these guys who he may have known a handful of them from their high school days, but more 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 Buckeyes than not had no clue who he is. All I know is he's coming in trying to take somebody's job. And so you have to uh, prove yourself with your work, 
with your execution, with your successes. And you know, nobody has said uh, an ill word about him. Not that you you would necessarily get that sort of feedback from players like, "Hey, Steele, what do you think about Tanner McAllister?" Yeah, he's he's uh, is a wasted scholarship, basically. You don't you know you're not going to get that from anybody. <laughs> but uh, the coaches really really uh, you know appreciate what he's been doing, and I would assume his teammates, the guys who are still trying to learn this defense, the fact that they can go to him. Whether it's on the field, uh, you know, right before the snap or off the field, you know, Steel Chambers said it earlier in the week that he's they're still a little bit confused on defense. So to have somebody that you can go to, to um, you know, talk to you like a player, and also maybe to keep the coach from knowing that you don't know what you're doing, you know, like if you have some <laughs> concerns and you don't necessarily want to go to the coach to ask him, and you you know you don't want to let the coach know that you didn't know this. Uh, you know, you, you go to Tanner McAllister, and as everybody has said, he's like a coach on the field. We'll see how he performs during the you know, during the games. It's a really difficult position, that nickel position, where you are guarding some very quick receivers in traffic, running you know drag routes and things like that, which are you know very difficult to defend in one on one situations. And then you know you also have to help against the run at times. So it's. It's not an easy position, which is probably one of the the reasons Jim Knowles was so happy to see him in the transfer portal. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple things are telling me. One is that they only took one transfer from Oklahoma State, and this was the guy that they took. And I think the other thing is only one guy has lost his black stripe this spring. All you know, you have all these true these early enrolling true freshmen in, and they've been very impressed with a number of them, but only one guy has lost his black stripe, and that's Tanner McAllister, and he lost it on. March 30th, I think. I mean, it's, it's been a while already. So yeah, he, he is uh, absolutely on his way. It feels like, uh, someone else who's on his way. He was here last fall, like much like JK Johnson and Jordan Hancock, but he was on the field a lot more than those guys were and made it almost an immediate impact. And that's JT Tuimolo. He was, you know, we've talked a bunch about how late he got here last summer and, and how remarkable it was that he got on the field as early as he did and made an impact kind of throughout the season. Now he's had those winter workouts. Now he's finally going through spring ball. I am really intrigued to see what JT Tuimolo out looks like because it seems like he's someone who could be on, you know on his way to very very big things this year. Yeah, I think the expectations are. I don't want to say getting to like Chase Young level or anything like that, but the expectations are for the next significant defensive end at Ohio State. That's what he is going to be. What that that's what the expectations are. I assume in the spring game, you know, we're talking time. If I set the over under at three and a half sacks, you know, with these we with these touch sacks, um, you might want to take the over on that. And he, him playing, from my understanding, my assumption, same position, basically strong side defensive end ish, with say Zach Harrison or something, you know, someone like that, where certainly a more veteran presence uh, alongside him is there. Um, you know, does it? There's questions like, does he start? Can he start? Will he start? How do you keep him off the field? And I think don't don't get too hung up on starts. As I like to remind people, Nick Bosa only started ten games in his Ohio State career, but he was obviously a, a gigantic contributor as a freshman and sophomore, and then three games as a starter as a junior. But you know, this is a guy who um, has just continued to impress people, continued to produce continued to um, almost defy expectations in terms of, well, we knew he was going to be good, but I guess maybe he shouldn't be this good this quickly without having access to the things that a lot of other people have had access to, like, you know, spring football and, uh, and, and a summer camp or, you know, summer workouts. Like the, the, he's going through the, these things for like the first time and is, uh, is one of those guys where I think he's probably just naturally good at, a lot of things and picks things up quickly and uh, just continues to pick it up. And then and like, okay, I know this now, what else can you teach me? And just continues to grow and grow, but you know, snowball basically. Yeah. Last year he didn't play his fall senior season. They played a spring season in the state of Washington and then he didn't show up for, you know, early enrolling. He didn't show up in this regular summer enrollment. He showed up basically right at the start of fall camp, right at the start of August. And it was like, okay, he was playing last year with, kind of like one and a half arms tied behind his back and still did what he did last year. Now to have, you know, ha- have a full year. 
yeah, I, I am very intrigued as far as over unders for the spring game. I kind of want to see teams. I'd like to see who the tackles are on the <laughs> other team uh, before we set an over under. And, you know, how much if, if he's playing against backups. Over uh, if he's playing, it's, you know, if he's if he's going against Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson, that's going to be uh, that is going to be worth the price of admission right there. Watching watching those guys go at it. We started with on offense. We've done uh, a bunch of guys on defense. Now we're going to end up with a guy who was a little bit of offense, a little bit of defense this spring. Cade Stover, he started on defense, then he moved back to tight end. He is someone who, you know, the, the defensive coaches were very excited when he was on their side of the ball. And then the offensive coaches were very excited when he was on their side of the ball. And you just, the way you've listened, you've heard kind of Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day talk about the importance of the tight end. You really have to have the tight end in the run game. And they don't have a sure thing at tight end. Like Joe Royer, they've been optimistic about him. G. Scott, it feels like you've heard good things about him. You've you've heard, you know, Sam Hart's there. You've got uh, Mitch Rossi there. Mitch Rossi's banged up right now. But, you know, they have, they have guys there, but there's not necessarily a sure thing at tight end. And, you know, the way they talk about the importance of the tight end in that run blocking, it just seems like, man, if you were going to put money on anyone just getting a ton of snaps at tight end this year, it feels like it's going to be the guy that was playing on defense like three weeks ago. Yeah, I, I wrote about Kate Stover on Thursday, uh, and the the discussion has been, first of all, it was it was his choice to move back to offense after his uh, stint at linebacker late in the season. And it was a decision based on what his future holds. And as he said, there's not a lot of um, interest. Nobody's really clamoring for a six foot four, two hundred sixty pound middle linebacker in today's game. That's true of Ohio State's defense. It's true of a lot of defenses out there. Maybe he can do it in a three four and be one of those big inside linebackers. But it, it's a situation where he can help on offense a lot more than he could on defense when you consider that Ohio State basically plays two linebackers and they've already got a bunch of linebackers that they're trying to figure out how to make happy by playing somewhere or how to keep them interested and engaged. And so what you know what what they're going to do is bring that mentality that his defensive mentality to the offense and he was started the spring on defense and now he's the number one tight end. So not many people have made a bigger jump this spring than a guy who wasn't actually at that position to a guy who is now the number one at that position. And, you know, I think his physicality is necessary on offense. It's needed. It will be well received. I'm, I'm assuming Travion Henderson, Mind Williams, those guys are, you know, look forward to having that kind of mentality on offense. And, uh, yeah, so this has been a, a nice rise for him. I wonder, I wonder how eased in he was you know did he for the first half of practice was he with the threes and then or or the twos not, not that they really have threes but you know how, how long before he was the number one because he knows the position he knows the offense he was able to hit the ground running this time as opposed to last time moving to tight end where it's you know he was behind jake hosman luke farrell jeremy rucker like he was the low man on the totem pole so he, he got to learn but it's, it was still a process. Now he knows the position and he can just go. I am. Uh, he, he is kind of near the top of the list of guys I'm most interested to see because he feels like no matter where he is, he has, has felt to me all year going back to last year, like wherever he is, if he gets an opportunity, he's going to be a fan favorite. He's going to be someone who people enjoy watching. People just like his style of play. People like watching him just mash people into the ground. I think that he's going to be someone who, if he, you know, he has the opportunity now at tight end, I don't, you know, I don't think he's necessarily going to be breaking any receiving records this year. Uh, even, even though it is the year of the tight end, Thank you. I don't think you're going to, you know, you're probably not going to see a 500 yard season out of him, but I think you're probably going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, highlight reel blocks, a lot of, uh, you know, the X's and O's guys, Ross Fulton pulling up, like watch what, what, uh, what, uh, Cade Stover does on this play and just erasing someone. It feels like he's going to be one of the, one of those guys this year. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. And I mean, the last time he uh, the last time he played in the spring game as a tight end, he did have a one handed catch. If you look at Tony's uh, Tony's article about like Cade Stover, you will see a picture of Cade Stover making a one handed catch on the sidelines. I think he was ruled out of bounds, mm -hmm. but it was still a pretty sweet catch. So he can uh, he can potentially be a factor in the uh, in the passing game as well. 
But uh, there's, I just took a look at the uh, early forecast, way too early forecast, irresponsibly early. I shouldn't even be sharing this, but the forecast says 63 degrees and partly cloudy. So oh, that is pretty darn close to a 21% chance of rain. That is pretty darn close to ideal spring game weather. So uh, consider, uh, you know, if you were if you were thinking about taking the uh, taking the kiddos out to a spring game, that is always a always a good time. Very uh, very low stakes, very uh, easy game. The tickets are seven bucks a pop. You can buy them at OhioStateBuckeyes.com. And uh, if you are looking to take your kids to a game, that is about the easiest game you can take them to. So uh, can, if you uh, are doing that, then uh, make sure you buy those tickets early because they, you know, this is Ohio State. They will occasionally sell out the spring game, as crazy as that is. So um, we'll, we will have a full week of coverage next week in the lead up to the spring game. There's always a lot to talk about. It's always uh, more exciting than it should be, I think, to have football this time of year and have like a full stadium. So we'll probably have uh, an irresponsible amount of coverage next week, uh, not only on the Morning Scoop, but of course also on the uh, Buckeye Weekly podcast that Tony and I do. I'm sure Kevin Noon will have the Big Me kickoff, Alex Kleitman on Around the Oval, Gives in the Bank, Mark Givler, and Bill the Bank Green. They just dropped a fantastic episode on uh, Malik Hartford. Make sure you check that one out, but I'm sure they'll have uh, more coverage next week as well. So uh, you can find all of those wherever you find this. Just search Buckeye Scoop to find the uh, find those on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. You can subscribe right there and also leave us a five-star rating and review which will help other folks find those shows as well. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.